Hello, welcome back to my easel. Let's look at a way to deal with paper that may or may not be the right um, background colour choice. Usually my colour is, I like to choose, it is the colour of my shadows within the area that I'm trying to paint. But sometimes in those shadowed areas I might have a very uh, bright area. If I'm doing clouds, for example, and I need brightness, I really sometimes don't want to fight that underneath colour. And I can very easily attack that if I have a little bit of prep thing. I'm using an Art Spectrum Colour Fix Primer. And all I have to do with this, if I know approximately where the area is that I need to keep light, because I want to keep... Um, now I'm going to take this higher. There's going to be a little rim of trees there and then I'm coming across and here is a hill coming over. I've actually got the ocean beyond that but we're not going to see that. Uh, but all of this area is going to be lit with skylight. Now I could put simply the pastel on that I wanted and wet that with alcohol and that's a very, very good way to do it. Or I can keep the same surface going by choosing a colour from the Pastel Fix range. I just paint this on, let it dry. And then when it's dry, I have an area that's separated into an area that will take light colours, the high tones, without any challenge and they can live in their own comfortable space and not fight the dark underneath them. I like to watch the texture here. I can make this rough if I wanted to. I can even pile it on a little bit thicker. I could make it lumpy, which I've done in other instances if I want a lot of texture underneath it but this sky doesn't need lumpiness it's full of lovely airy shapes so I just pop that down and put it aside and let it dry one little word of warning though this pastel primer dries very very solidly and once that's dry, it's beautiful to paint on. I can paint on it with oil or I can paint on it with pastel. But we don't want it to dry just as solidly in the brush. So you simply wash it out with water. This is not the only colour. Whatever colour Art Spectrum have made their papers, their surfaces, they have a pastel primer in that colour. So you can mix and match or even blend them together and make your own. Now there's also a possibility that you have paper, and I'm doing it now, that you simply don't want, and there's nothing, let's say there's nothing left, and you don't want to use green. It's not a colour I use frequently, so that's simply all I do. I'm not going to waste the paper. And it's worth a little bit of investment. And if I'm doing a very large, let's say I was doing one this big and I didn't have paper that colour, the right colour that I wanted, I could get a, a piece of MDF timber, glass, heavy cardboard, whatever, and simply paint this surface on it and it's ready to go. Alright, that's ready. That will be dry, depending on weather, probably about 20 minutes. It's not buckling because it's on the heavy paper. And here's a little dark one. While I'm at it, I'll have another go as well. If you're not working with one of the sanded papers, but you're working on paper, pastel drawing paper, which is much thinner and you can see how easily it bends. 
um, you, they will come out in various tones. And it's these tones that you're trying to control to make your job easier to paint. Um, this one is a very definitely mid. This one is still mid. This one is higher because it's lighter. And this one is a lower tone. Fine. Now, if this was our subject matter over here, this is an area that we're looking to be lower. And this is an area that's full of light and we don't want to fight the lower tone. We want to really be able to put the light area on it without drama. Now, you can just go straight on and you can paint on these papers and not pre-prepare anything. Don't therefore think that it is essential. But if you want to control that area. This here is already like the darker tone. This one would require much more light, density of light to get over to reflect the intensity of light of the day. With a middle tone, let's say you're going middle tone, like here, if you are going a mid-tone, that gives you a chance to move either way without any real drama. So if you get to the, I've chosen here, a colour that could be middle, a colour that would be darker, and one that would be lighter. So therefore I have three tones for working area here. I'll just divide that off very roughly. So my first application would simply be take the middle tone and put a thin layer of where you want it. This mid-tone here is therefore the base for you to start working on top of. The tooth on a paper doesn't have the same grippability as a sanded paper tooth, which holds many, many more layers. Just putting on a glove. Papers <clears throat> do tend to show the type of tooth that's at work. Sometimes it's quite rough and very regular. Let's have a look on this side. See, if I rub on that, you may be able to see that there is a very regular pattern there. I don't like using that pattern side. I like using the slightly smoother side because I don't have to regulate the pattern at all. But the smooth side doesn't give you as much flexibility as the more sanded or paper with more tooth. You can't have as many layers. So treat your layers with respect. My first layer I could leave or I could softly do, it's a, a paper towel, and I can push that in quite softly and I'm giving myself a thin base on which to work. I'll just have a look at the two sides. The thin base there still gives me ability to add more layer without any drama. I can add darks. Once again, without any drama, I do not rub these in. These are now floating on the surface of the tooth, as if that's the tooth. These are now just sitting up there. This layer, rubbing it, pushed them down and left available the top tooth sitting up for us to add more pastel to. And then I can add another layer. Is this the light one? That's the light and it goes over the top. But as soon as I get too many layers, you'll notice that the pastel starts to blend too quickly. But the cleanliness or the crispness that it goes on starts to disappear. So we have to plan this that we don't have too many layers. I'm going to pick this one as a higher tone and it will go on. 
I'm going to pick this one which is once again about a mid-tone and it will go on quite happily but the more layering I add the messier it seems to get so we have to consider carefully test your colour before you put it on it's a good idea to put a little bit of spare paper at the side test your colour test your colour is it going to be the one you want test your colour if I tried to put that on there it's a harder pastel it doesn't go on well will go on but not as well. You pick the softer pastel and you will find it does slide over just that little bit better. So here we have application, that's the middle. This is the higher tone. This was my middle. There wasn't much difference between the middle and higher. So yes, I can choose a slightly higher one. And when the paper's thinner, you do have to choose those jumps a little bit more carefully. Now I nearly put on, I'm looking for the darker tone. So I put them on and I make sure they go where I want them. I can't put it on, change my mind, put another layer on, change my mind and keep on building. The sanded papers allow more layers and allow much more flexibility. These ones will allow it, but they don't allow this so much because you're building, building, building the density or the layering. And if I try and put something over here, I can if I'm very careful. But it's a little bit muddier. This colour here was quite a bright colour. Put it down here and it just mixes with the colours that are underneath. So to get that type of colour over top I have to put it on in one stroke and I don't go backwards and forwards. So if it was light on the edges they'd be single strokes as we're going. I hope that helps. So you can give yourself the middle tone, darker tone, lighter tone as your build up and then add the other accents. In this area, there's your lighter tone. This is already sort of the mid tone. There's your lighter tone. Going a bit richer. There was one in the middle. That's better. And the tooth gets filled quite quickly. Yes, you can still play, but if it's a shadowed area, figure out how much is there. If I want to cover those little bits of area where the tooth is showing through and I haven't covered it properly myself, uh, don't forget you can do this. But I don't like fingers on this because it tends to polish the paper and make it smoother. This tissue just spreads it out and fills the tooth very softly. And I can now put layers of colour over that if that colour is shining over the top. And it's best, I'm going on the sharp edge here, a sharp edge will work obviously more definitely but a sharp edge fills the tooth quickly. A sharp edge here pushing it on there gives you a definite line, fills that part but it doesn't make it so easy to take things over the top of it again. So middle, dark, light but keep it simple.